Okay. Good morning and welcome to the third day of the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic. Whew, that's a lot to say at one time. <laughs> I'm excited about this morning session. It's going to take place on the ice. Our next presenters include John West, a U.S. Curling Association Certified Adaptive Curling Instructor and coach who has been at the Winter Sports Clinic Adaptive Curling Team Leader since 2007. He is joined with his other Winter Sports Clinic Adaptive Curling Team members, including Paul, John Otto, Georgia Krusilic, and Boris Krusilic. Let's give them a warm welcome, everybody. Well, welcome to Colorado Springs. Um, I'm John West. I'm the Broadmoor Curling Club, and we teach what we call adaptive curling. Uh, what we have today is um, we're going to give you a little history of curling. We're going to give a demonstration of what curling is in kind of the traditional form that you'll see at the Olympics. Then we're going to do what we really do, which is called adaptive curling. What we do is whatever physical ability a veteran may have, um, we adapt the sport to them. Uh, what you'll see today is a demonstration of, at least, of two different types. One is wheelchair, which you see in the Paralympics, and the other one you see is what we call ambulatory. It's people with vision impairment, uh, hearing impairment, uh, TBI, uh, PTSD, that sort of stuff. So what I'd like to do is introduce uh, two veterans that are gonna be our kind of our guinea pigs. And uh, then if Julie Lampton is on from Aspen, uh, she heads up the uh, support up there and would like to say hi to the vets. From then on, uh, we'll start uh, start doing the demo, it's, or start doing what is curling, and then what's the demo from there. So if you'll stand by. Okay. All right, we have two veterans here, which I'd like to have them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm William Mathis. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Brian Wells from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, they're going to be our two veterans today. Uh, if our other uh, wheelchair veteran um, gets his car keys out of the locked truck, he'll be here also. What is curling? Well, as you've probably seen on the Olympics, it's a bunch of people having fun throwing a stone down the ice and yelling at each other and sweeping with brooms. The sport itself uh, came from Scotland, as you can tell from the uniform. Um, the oldest curling stone we found is dated 11, or excuse me, 1511. So it's been around a while. It came to North America by the British when they defeated the French in the mid 1700s in Canada. The Scottish troops brought the tradition to the United States or to Canada, North America. And around 1800, it migrated south. So what is curling? Well, the name is, sounds kind of strange, but what you'll see today in the demonstration is when we push or deliver the stone down the ice, just as we release it, we put a either clockwise or a counterclockwise turn on. That turn, has no effect initially. The stone goes dead straight, but the last 15 so feet, that slow turn takes over and the stone itself curls in that direction. So you've seen the Olympics, okay? A curling team, traditional curling and adaptive curling is four people, all right? They pay, play another team of four people. All right. So there's four people on it. Basically, the first, second, third, and fourth, which is called the skip, was kind of the captain of the team itself. All right. 
Now, what we want to do is show you the equipment that we use for traditional curling and then the equipment we use for uh, adaptive curling. So, um, why don't you grab the shoes? I'm going to turn this on to you. This All right, there we go. All right, this is Georgette. She's one of our best instructors. She's the one that's going to be instructing the um, ambulatory. Okay, the equipment, really simple. We have shoes, but they're kind of special. If you look at the one shoe, it has a Teflon surface. That's what you slide on. The other shoe has kind of a, a gripper that's what you push off on all right now in traditional curling we have um, a broom now why do we have a broom basically what it does is we polish in front of the stone all right that increases or excuse me decreases the friction so the stone goes further all right what will show in when we adapt ambulatory, if, if you're standing, we use a stick. And the stick itself attaches to the stone. And then we push it down the ice. For a wheelchair, we have a longer stick such that the person sits in the chair attaches to the stone itself and pushes down the ice. All right, now, the team consists of four people. Obviously, one person's throwing a stone. Two people are sweeping. They're there to sweep if called on. If the stone is perfect, they don't need to sweep. If not, <clears throat> you, we basically sweep. Now, where do we shoot? All right. If you'll take a look at what we call the house, it's a 12 foot circle and 114 feet down the ice, way down on the other end is another circle. Okay, that circle is 114 feet away and the object of the game is to deliver or push your stone from a what we call a hack in the ice, and we'll demonstrate a shot in a few minutes. Okay, so. Um, do you want to demonstrate a throw? There we go. Okay, what Georgette's going to do is, can you do an, a, a traditional one out of the hack? No, okay. Where the hell's it? Right? Okay. We haven't been able to curl for a while because of COVID, so we're a little rusty. If you'll notice, Georgette is right handed. Okay. She's got the stone in her right hand and she's got her right foot in the hack. That's what she's gonna push off of. And if you notice, it goes down the ice. Now, Boris is sweeping. And if you'll see the cone way down on the ice, that's the center of the circle. <laughs> that is a great stone. Okay, so what we would like to do now is demonstrate using the stick. Okay, George Jed is lining up. Now she would be standing. There we go. Goes forward. We usually teach a five-step method, but go for it. Just 
shoot the stone down the ice. There we go. And if you'll notice it going down the ice, what you just heard is the best sound in curling. It's two stones hitting each other. All right, so now what we're gonna do is Georgette, have you met our two? Okay, what she did is a tradition in curling. When you meet your opponent, you always shake hands and say good curling. Good okay, now curling. Georgette is gonna take these two vets, one of which is the vision impaired and one of which is a TBI uh, participant and she's going to take them through what she teaches up an aspen. Okay, what we're trying to do today is introduce curling to people that have never seen it before, but we've also got a secondary goal is try to convince you that when we get back on the ice in Aspen, come and join us. So, we'll... Okay, do you want Boris to give you a hand as far as minding? Okay, which one of you want to go first? Okay, come on. Watch your step. Okay, can you hear Georgette? If not, I'll give a running commentary. We can't really hear her. Uh, John, if you want to provide Okay, I'll give a running commentary. Perfect, then. thank you. Uh, basically, what she is doing, safety is very important in our sport. Okay, so we do work one-on-one -on -one with the vets. What we're doing now is she's explaining how it's attached to the stone, how it's gonna be pushed, and then, which is key to curling, how you put either a clockwise or a counterclockwise turn in it. Okay, it takes a while to learn this. If you look down the ice, you'll see Boris getting ready to sweep. Okay, as we said before, the sweeping is designed to make the stone go further if necessary. So you hear a lot of screaming in the Olympics. That's what they're basically passing the information on. Now, if we had a full team, you would have the skip on the other end. The skip, he or she would give basically three commands. Where they want the stone to lie, what turn to put on it, and what target. So as you can see, his first stone ever got over halfway, which is really pretty good. Okay, we're going through the introduction, what she's doing now is basically equating the vet, the vet with what we're going to be doing. Okay, depending on the, the physicality of the veteran, uh, many times we have what we call um, helpers, which will be right on their arm uh, to basically ensure that, you know, we have safety itself. Um, it's not uncommon for uh, vision impaired people to have their dog on the ice. We usually provide a, uh, a mat so they don't get too cold. But uh, what she's doing right now is trying to explain uh, basically how the stone is to be delivered. One of the techniques we use is just basically take five steps and push. But what she's trying to do is do two things. One, tell the individual what they're doing and to orient. Now, if you watch that stone, watch it. Okay, she's yelling sweep. 
And that stone, the first one he's ever thrown is in the house. So basically this is what adaptive curling is all about. All right, now it doesn't look like our wheelchair person is, is gonna get here. So, do you wanna have them compete with a couple of shots? Absolutely. All right. I think we're ready. Basically this is the fun part of curling. We have two vets. They're now going to make shots one, one way and one the other. Just got a message from Julie Lampton in Aspen. Uh, is it possible to have the moderator uh, get her online? and then she can say hi from the Aspen people. Julie, you still on? I'm still on, John, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. I just want to say I miss everyone so much. This is always my favorite week of the year. It's bringing tears to my eyes to see you all on the ice. It's so wonderful, good curling and have a great time and we can't wait to have you back in Aspen next year. All right. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thank now, Julie represents uh, the Aspen Elks, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, we provide uh, curling, but they provide incredible support for us. We couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do it without the volunteers. So we're all looking forward to trying to see you guys back there next year. All right, now let's, I'm gonna move the camera over so we can actually watch the competition here. Okay, what Georgette is doing is kind of explaining the surface of the ice, uh, kind of giving an orientation. Going down the ice. Ah, that happens all the time. You can basically learn the techniques of curling, either regular curling, which we call traditional or adaptive, probably in about an hour. Um, so what we would like the vets out there to consider is if you're really interested in this, um, the VA has a, li has a, um, a listing of how you could contact local curling clubs. Uh, obviously you can contact us also and we'll get you connected to a curling club. Um, you know, if you're familiar with Paralympic curling, um, the, uh, the United States does have a curling team and believe it or not, two of the members on the current team actually learned to curl up at the Aspen event. So um, if you're an aspiring Olympian, you might consider it. We'd love to have you up there. Okay, the next stone. All right, he's getting ready. One, two, three, four, five, push. Stone is dead straight. It's going towards the cone. It's in the house. Whoa. Hey, John. Okay, that is probably within three feet of the center. So that's a darn good stone. Hey, John. All right. Do you so think we have two people competing. One has a stone in the house. If you'll notice the stones themselves, they have two different colors in this case, red and blue. So that's kind of how we keep track of it. 
And then at the end of this demo, what we're gonna do is uh, teach you how to score it, but it's really simple. And it does not look like we're getting our wheelchair person. Uh, unfortunately, he locked his keys in the truck this morning. All right, stones going down the ice, sweeping. And it's in the house. That is awesome. Okay, just remember, these people have only thrown three stones each in their life. So it's not the instruction, it's the student. Okay, kind of the same drill, getting connected. This is the second stone. Okay, he's moving forward, he's building up momentum. He's going down the center line, he's pushing the stone. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's go down and score it. You got two more, you got more stones? We'll mark those stones here so they don't have to walk all the way. Okay, that's fine. But, okay, but who won? Okay, what we're gonna do, scoring and curling is really simple. Okay, you've got four people. Each of them throw two stones. That's eight stones per side per team. Total of 16 stones are thrown in what's called an end, which is basically you throw 16 stones one way, you score, and then you come back. Okay, if you'll notice, the circle itself, we call it the house, is 12 feet across. All right, you'll see kind of a center button. That's about a one foot circle. If you looked at it closely, there would actually be a, a point that's the center. All right, so how do we score? Well, if you'll notice here, we have two blue stones and one red stone in the house. All right, so how you score is very simple. You pick the stone that's closest to the center which is the one on her right hand. Okay, that scores one point. Now we go to the next closest stone. If it's the same color, which in this case it's blue, then we score a second point. And if you do your math, since you've thrown eight stones, if we had eight blue stones in the house, they would score eight, very rare. I've only seen it done once in the Olympics. Okay, let's mix them up a bit. Come on, guys. All right, who was blue? Bill, raise your hand, who was blue? He won, okay. Based on that end. Now, how many ends do we play? When we play for fun, uh, usually eight. When we play the Olympics or whatever, it's 10. So what you've seen is a very compressed um, demonstration of adaptive curling. We wish we'd had a wheelchair person here so we could show how to do that. But basically, if you envision someone sitting in a chair, all right, let's assume that person is right-handed. Okay, if you remember that longer stick attaches to the stone. Now, because that person is in a chair, let's say you're in the Olympics, one of your teammates is behind you, locking the two chairs together so you have a stability. All right, and then the person delivers the stone, pushes it down the ice. Now the challenge and the beauty of wheelchair curling is no sweepers. 
So what you'll find is wheelchair curlers at the competitive level are probably some of the best shots in the world because they have to be. All right. Um, do we have any questions out there? Hey, John. Yes. Real, real quick before we get to questions, do you think uh -huh. you could show us um, a stone coming into the house with someone sweeping from this angle? Okay, not coming in. Okay, very. I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, not every stone, there is strategy in curling, all right? Not every stone has to be in the house. In many cases, we put stones out in front of the house, uh, basically to block the other team, or we can do what we call promoting. In other words, we put a stone in front of the house, and then we tap it in with our next stone. Does that answer that question? Yes, it okay. does. But do you think we can maybe see it? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I think we passed the Starbucks. Stand by. Is he out there? Get a chair. All right. Uh, what we're trying to do is just get a regular chair and put one of our people in it to show it. What you wanted to do. Who tried to murder Chandler, but you were right. Is actually see what we just tried to demonstrate, which is stone in front of the house. Um, I think we can demonstrate it on this end so you can see it a little better. Georgette? Okay, they've asked to see a stone in front. So put a stone in front and then just throw another one this way to show how you promote it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, you, curling, um, you can like we say, learn in an hour. Um, I've been doing it close to 60 years. I learn every time. So it, it's, it's a sport for life. Um, the strategies, uh, here's another thing. Um, is there curling on TV? If you were in Canada, you'd see it 24 seven. Okay. In the United States, we're quite, we're not quite that good yet. However, there's something called YouTube. And if you type in championship curling in Canada, you will see the term the you know, the teams you see every four years competing on a weekly basis. All right, I'm seeing some picture. Awesome. Okay, what you're seeing now is what we do up in Aspen. These are pictures from a previous event. And the person in the red is actually on the Paralympic team. All right, we're back on the ice. Oh, I just promoted it. I'll yeah. <laughs> So, okay, kind of setting the stage. You notice there's the house, 12 foot circle. There's a center line, and there's a red stone on the center line, but not in the house. It's called a guard stone. Okay, what we're doing now is what's called a promotion. In other words, we waited for the other team to throw a blue stone, then we would have thrown the red stone itself. So that's a promotion. 
All right, now what, we're gonna try it one more time, but then what we're gonna do is a takeout. So, watch the stone, watch the stone. It's coming up, it's right on the line. Almost. Georgette, why don't you do a takeout? Take out a blue stone. But basically what you're seeing are the three different shots in curling. One is what we call a draw shot. That's where you just try to put it where you want it. In many cases, right on the button. Second one is what you just saw, which is a promotion. In other words, you tap one of your stones in. The third one, is what you just saw, it's a takeout shot. So that's curling in a nutshell. Any other questions? If the audience has any questions, you can raise your hand or you can type your name in the chat box and we can ask John your questions. Someone uh, asked, how much does a stone weigh? Well, the stones themselves are made out of a very special granite found only one location on an island off the coast of Scotland. It takes about a year to make a curling stone uh, to make a full set, but they weigh 42 pounds. All right, what Georgette is trying to do, I think, is a takeout. Let's see what happens. Okay. Very good. You can see how, you know, we can literally play with the stones. But, you know, kind of getting back to why we're really here. Uh, I know there's a lot of vets out there, some of which have curled, some of which haven't. Those that have curled, we love to see you back next year. Those that haven't, we'd love to have you join us. So are there any other questions? John, I don't see any other questions. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much. It's a shame we couldn't have the person in the wheelchair here, but stuff happens. And um, one thing we want to state before we get off the air is um, on the uh, event website, there should be an address of the US Curling Association on where to find clubs, all right? We would also, um, if anybody's interested, we would love to match you up with a local club. I think our, um, our contact information is also on the website. The third thing is, there is a curling game on the web. The address of it uh, is on there. So that's another way of actually learning how to curl on the web itself. We want to say thank you to John and his team. That was awesome. I know I learned quite a bit of information about curling. Um, okay. We appreciate you sharing your passion and talent with us.